Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I've got a treat for you and I've been thinking about this for some time. If you've been a part of this channel, you know there is a ton of bear hunting content on here and a lot of bear hunts. And I've killed 35 bears with a bow and probably 20 or 25 of those I've got on film. I didn't really start seriously videoing my bear hunts until just a few years ago, but I thought wouldn't it be fun to put together a collection of my top 10 favorite bear hunts and just put short segments in from each of these top 10 and so that's what I decided to do here and this is the first half of them I'm going to do one through five and then six through ten now like I said I didn't get all my favorite hunts on video for example I had a just a phenomenal bear hunt a spot and stock hunt in British Columbia where I just loved every minute of it. It was tons of fun. I saw a ton of bears. In fact, I shot the 43rd bear that I saw. It's really difficult to spot and stalk black bears in open areas of hillsides and power lines and, and uh, timber cuts and so forth with a bow. Um, when I finally did shoot my bear, uh, my guide, I had asked him to film and he had the camera in his hand, but he was so focused on me and the bear that he, he never even thought about the camera. He didn't even turn it on. So I didn't get the, that hunt, but uh, it, it was a great hunt. So that would have been in the top 10, but so that gives you an idea. Most of these hunts are baited hunts that are on this these two videos. And then uh, they're all me shooting a bear except for one. And that one is somebody else is shooting the bear, but I was there and it's a bizarre hunt and absolutely needs to be included in this. So that's what we're looking at here. Uh, I'm going to add a bonus at the end of the second video, by the way, which is my 14-year-old son shooting his first bear. So we're, uh, we're going to have fun with this. So let's just go ahead and get them rolling. This was the first of many of my hunts in Ontario, and I was hunting north of Lake of the Woods near Reddit, Ontario, with John Palson of Hideaway Outfitters. And this was the first time I actually experienced what people call a bucket bear. Literally, as the trucks were pulling away from the bait, my son Dawson and I just got settled in, and a bear just walked right in. I could actually look over to my right and see the truck, and look to my left and see the bear at the same time. Now, Dawson came along to film this hunt for me, and uh, it was the first night, so I wasn't really sure if I wanted to shoot this bear or not. It was a pretty nice bear, but then... Uh, not long later, here comes an even bigger one, and it was still the first hour of my first evening on this hunt, and so I just decided to hold off, and uh, I, I just really wasn't sure how big of a bear I was looking at and what the potential was for this area, so we just filmed this bear, and then I went back to camp and showed them the video, and they all said, man, you are nuts. That is a huge bear. You should have shot that bear. So the second night, we came back, and uh, the bear came in, and I wasn't sure if it was the same one or not. And it took me a while to kind of analyze if it was the same bear or not. And then I decided it was, and I promptly missed the shot. So uh, the next night we went back there again, and uh, we had wolves just run the bears off. And the bears literally just took off when they saw the wolves, and the wolves were just around the bait all the time and the bears wouldn't come anywhere near it while the wolves were in the area so the third night we went back again and the wolves came again and we never saw a single bear so I knew that we were just gonna have to go ahead and uh, hunt a different bait so the following day Dawson and I went out and got some uh, musky fishing in uh, Dawson loves the musky fishing so um, day four we went to a completely new bait and got set up and uh, a great big bear was around the area for uh, quite a while and uh, he just wouldn't come in wouldn't come in about an hour later uh, finally it was just starting to get dark a little bit and uh, this bear finally got his courage up and slowly worked his way in and one thing I have found that if you leave one pop of whip or one branch that could possibly be in your way when it's time to shoot that's probably where the bear will stop right behind that branch and this bear stopped and he had his right front leg back which is where my shot hit and I actually broke that right front leg and we tracked him for quite a ways there was tons of blood and then finally we the came right to a place too. where there was a really bloody side. bed but there was no bear in that bed and so at that point it became pretty clear that we needed to back out 
in the morning we came back with just about everybody in camp. I think there was five or six of us that were um, looking. Uh, one of the guys that was carrying a rifle was about 50 yards ahead of us, and he hollered, and he said, I see your bear, but he lifted his head up. What, what should I do? And I said, shoot him. So he did shoot him and finish the bear off, and it was a really beautiful bear, a really nice pelt, 375 pounds, the biggest bear that I had shot at that time. It's a nice bear you got there. That's Thank a nice you. Bear. Nice. I appreciate That's it. Nice. I was worried I was going to be apologizing to you up and down. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to get him out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, uh, we had a struggle getting him out, but we managed to get him in a sled, uh, get him hooked up to the four-wheeler, and got him out. So just a really fun hunt, very successful, and enjoyed every minute of it. Well, this next hunt takes place in one of my absolute favorite places to bear hunt. That's the Duck Mountains in western Manitoba. And I was uh, up there for two reasons. Uh, first of all, I was hunting with my friend Tom Ainsworth there, and I was able to fulfill one of my lifelong dreams, killing a fully velvet whitetail. So the very next night, I went and hunted with Todd Wolgamuth at Baldy Mountain Outfitters. And I just got settled into the stand, and the uh, bear parade started right away. Had bears coming in. I ended up seeing 11 bears all together that evening, including a sow with three cubs. And uh, I, I looked over quite a few bears and uh, just enjoyed the evening with uh, all the action that I was having around there. And this was another hunt in which I actually missed a bear, but this time it wasn't my fault. So... Just watch and uh, see what happens. Oh my gosh. What the heck? What the heck? Well, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. I watched him and watched him finally decide I was going to go ahead and shoot him as a nice big adult male. When I drew my bow, I was just getting ready to anchor and my release went off and the arrow like was two feet low. I hadn't even settled the pin on him yet. Thank goodness it didn't wound him. I don't know what the heck is going on with this release. I didn't even have my finger on the trigger yet. in my backpack. I'm going to get it out and use it if I need it. Kind of aggressive there, buddy. There was four bears here. I shot the biggest one. The shot looked really good this time. I'm going to go back and review the footage, but it's really almost too dark. Uh, there's only about 10 minutes of legal shooting light left. I had a bear right at the base of my tree threatening to climb up in here with me. And then there's another smaller bear that was at the barrel. And then when I shot, I saw another bear streak off from that direction. So there was four bears here at one time. And I wish I heard a death moan, but I didn't. But the shot looked good. So I heard him really go crash, and he was really struggling to run. So I think the arrow hit the offside shoulder or leg. So anyway, I'm going to text Todd, and uh, he might as well come on in here and take up the trail. Sixty-two meters. Oh wow, that ain't bad at all. Here we are in a 
have to bring it there. Oh, here I'm not going to do it. And, uh, what an unbelievable blood trail. Good job, Bernie. Thank you, man. That's a good bear. You bet. Nothing wrong with that one. <laughs> and uh, this one here came in, and I was looking at a couple of 200 pound bears there, and I want this one's quite a bit bigger than them, so I'm going to take him. And um, So thanks to Todd and Baldy Mountain Outfitters, it's really uh, just a fantastic place to hunt here in the Duck Mountains. Really, really remarkable. Every time I come here, I'm just amazed at the number of bears and the size of bears. and you know, where else can you go and see the number of bears on my first night and, and a bait that you only put out a couple weeks ago, Todd, that's had um, 11 bears in one night. So, good deal. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. You bet. Well, thanks for hunting with us. For hunt number three here, we're headed to northern Saskatchewan to... Thunder Lake Outfitters, Lori Thorson, and he's on a beautiful lake and beautiful country up there. And I'm just going to roll through some of the footage from the first two days of this hunt before I get to day three. And they'd had a lot of rain, and uh, things were really flooded, at, you know, just everywhere. At the end of day two, we found that there was uh, a cinnamon bear, which is what I really wanted, on one of the baits. And as we were looking through the photos, um, in some photos, the bear would look bigger than others. It looked like a big male in a couple of the pictures, but the rest of them, it just looked like a small to medium-sized sow. And so uh, the first two days, I passed up a chocolate bear and some black bears and so forth. Uh, but then the third day, I decided to go to this bait with this cinnamon sow because we'd seen this on the trail camera, and I was a little confused about the size of the bear. Well, it turned out we were mistaken, and there was actually two cinnamon bears on this bait so let's just roll it this is a great place for a bear bait and they're just hammering this uh, bait and i've got several good uh, trail camera pictures of a, a bear that's a uh, nice size bear and it's got some red tint to its fur it looks like exactly what i came here for i'm really trying hard to get a cinnamon or a blonde to fill out my uh, grand slam of color face bears and it's about three o'clock right now and it gets dark about 9.30 to 9.45 and uh, I'm pretty excited about this evening. I'm sure I'm going to see bears. It's my third night. I've seen bears every night. Just haven't seen the right one yet and tonight I think I got a really good chance of seeing the right bear. Well this beautiful red bear came to the edge of the bait area. It was out of range but it would stand there and look around for 15 or 20 minutes and it did that four times over the next three hours but then finally it came and it finally decided to commit very cautiously to the bait He's down right there. I got my cinnamon. I got my cinnamon. He went down right there. There's the death moan. Oh my gosh. An hour and a half. An hour and a half. I've been working this crazy guy. I can't believe I finally got him. The fourth time he finally committed. I 
cannot believe it. How many years have I been trying to get a cinnamon bear? And there he lays. This bear, this bear came in over an hour and a half ago and he hung up out there and the wind was going right towards him. And he worked around back and forth and back and forth and I kept watching him perfectly still. I'd sit and and then, then he'd leave because he kept winding me. And uh, you know, he would, he'd lay down, he'd sit there, he'd walk back and forth and he'd leave. He'd be gone for 10, 15 minutes and I'd stand up and get some circulation back in my legs and then He'd come back and um, finally on the fourth time, he finally committed to the bait and you could see how cautious he finally came in. And I got drawn when his head was behind the barrel and uh, I hit him right in the back of the lungs and he ran 40, probably 40 yards over there and just piled up and I heard the death bones. So I got my bear, I got my cinnamon. I'm three quarters of the way to a grand slam of color face bears and now I gotta try to get a blonde that's the hardest one well this is where things got weird my guide came in and he had this little dog with him and we were looking at the bear and getting it positioned for photos and so forth and all of a sudden this little dog just bristles up and starts to growl and i'd look up by the bait barrel and here comes another cinnamon bear and this one's a big male it's quite a bit bigger than the one i just shot and all of a sudden i just realized why we were confused about the size of this bear there was actually two cinnamon bears on this bait and we were looking at the trail camera photos of two different bears not realizing that that was the case so i actually shot the smaller of the two it's uh it's may 1st and for the I don't know how many year in a row I am in the Duck Mountains of Manitoba trying to shoot a blonde bear. And uh, this has been quite a quest for several years now. I've got three of the four major color phases of black bears. I'm trying to kill the Grand Slam of color phase bears. And uh, blonde is the only one that continues to elude me. I've had several close calls here in the Duck Mountains with blonde bears. And I uh, had one in front of me a couple of years ago, um, twice, that didn't get a shot at. But uh, this year is the earliest that I've ever been here. It's May 1st today. There isn't any leaves on the trees yet, and the uh, lakes are still frozen over up here. And uh, we have uh, one bait that's got a small blonde bear on it. We got a good photo of it. Traditionally been a very, very good stand over the years. Many, many bears have been killed out of this particular spot in the last uh, probably 20 years since this bait has been here. There's many generations of bears have come through here and uh, it's just there they pile in here pretty good uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see anywhere maybe from six to ten different bears tonight and hopefully one of them will be a blonde so here we go It's day three, May 3rd. You probably wonder what happened to day two. Um, I sat at a bait where a blonde was seen a couple times last year, last night, and uh, saw six bears, one real nice boar, a couple medium-sized boars, and then a sow with two cubs. Uh, the first night was quite a experience, and uh, when I about when I'm tell you what I'm about to say, you're either going to think I'm number one crazy number two a liar and i've got the video evidence to prove that i'm not a liar so yeah um i passed up a boone and crockett bear just an absolute giant i saw five bears six bears all males one was a small one uh, then three were average bears one was just a dandy and then at the last minute of uh, the last 30 minutes of daylight an absolute giant came in huge melon on him just a huge boone and crockett head on him and I'm not just blowing smoke. I've shot a 21-inch Boone and Crockett, so I know what they look like. And this bear was, this is definitely clearly bigger than the Boone and Crockett minimums and also a big-bodied bear. 
but he's not blonde so I let him go. Monday we had pictures of a blonde bear in here. It's not the same blonde, it's a little smaller one, but it's a decent representative bear. I would definitely shoot it if I saw it. And uh, he didn't come back in the last, uh, he didn't come back Tuesday or today, Wednesday. So I'm not sure if he's still in this area or not, but this is my best bet at this point. Um, I, I spooked a uh, sow with three cubs off this bait when I drove in here. I got some good news and more good news and I've got some bad news and some additional bad news as well. Uh, the good news is I haven't seen a mosquito since I've been here. Another good news is I have seen 17 bears in three days of hunting. Bad news is they're all black bears, no color phase bears at all. This bait is just being pounded. Um, three days ago we filled up a 55 gallon drum completely full and it is not a scrap left. Quite a few different bears and a couple of color phase bears that we have on camera on this bait including a uh, just a beautiful reddish brown cinnamon bear that's uh, got a real nice color to it. Because I really have exhausted my options for a blonde bear on this hunt it looks like I'm uh, probably gonna close the deal. I'm done shopping and time to start buying I guess and uh, if that really pretty cinnamon comes in here tonight uh, I'll probably succumb to the temptation to shoot it. Well, it's my last day in the Duck Mountains with Baldy Mountain Outfitter. And uh, I saw nine bears last night, including a huge uh, old male chocolate that's just all really mature, all beat up, had scars on his head. Really, really nice bear. Uh, one real good sized black bear, definitely over Pope and Young minimums, uh, came in right at last light. Had a lot of interaction between the bears, uh, fighting and chasing and stuff like that. I figured it would be a zoo, and it was. Um, I had one probably three-year-old, maybe four-year-old male that uh, was pretty interested in me and actually came up my ladder stand. Just about got ran over by a raven. Came up my ladder stand to the point where I actually put my toe out in front of his nose, and so he backed down off the ladder stand. The cinnamon bear came in to my left down a trail that walks right by the base of my tree and he stopped and looked right up at me and spooked and then he just made a wide circle around and I got a little bit of video footage of him but he didn't come in until it was way too dark to shoot actually just before Todd came and picked me up with the four-wheeler. Tonight I'm going to shoot a bear and I hope it's that cinnamon I'm debating about whether to shoot that chocolate or the big black one um, or something else but uh, it, I'm going to shoot a bear before dark tonight, so i got a bear to go home with and, and to get my story and, and make this video worthwhile for all the viewers. But I shot that great big brown one. <clears throat> it's about 15 minutes of daylight left, and we had two other bears still around here. And uh, I just felt like uh, it was the right thing to do. I haven't seen the cinnamon tonight. I uh, decided if the chocolate came back after nine o'clock and I hadn't seen the cinnamon then I was going to shoot him and that's what happened so he's a really nice bear we'll uh, 
we'll go recover him and uh, we'll have a look. I've been to the Duck Mountains many, many times now and I've killed so many bears here. Big bears, color bears, Boone and Crockett. Well, okay, we recovered the bear last night. I'm um, really happy with this bear. Um, it's not a not a blonde bear, but holy cow, what a great consolation prize, huh? Well, another amazing hunt in the Duck Mountains. I saw a total of 34 bears and shot a really nice, mature chocolate male. And uh, the next hunt is also in the Duck Mountains, but this one's a fall hunt. And uh, once again, I was hoping for a blonde, but there wasn't any blondes on camera. And I wasn't really expecting to see a blonde on this hunt, and I was going to be there deer hunting anyway, so I decided to go ahead and uh, take a bear maybe on the second or third day. But what happened on the first day is just too crazy to explain. You have to see it to believe it. I'm in the Duck Mountains in western Manitoba hunting with Tom Ainsworth at Grandview Outfitting, the same place that I hunted last year on opening day, and I said I'm not going to shoot a bear opening day. And then four hours later, I shot a 400-pound booner. So this year, I'm not going to shoot a bear on opening day, probably. Um, it's starting to feel like deja vu all over again, because last year I had 20 bears around me in four hours on this hunt, a different stand. But when we came in here, <clears throat> we're getting the stand ready, and you look up, and there's a, there's a yearling cub in a tree up here above me, just uh, two trees away. And the amount of sign around here is just incredible. The, the whole area is just stomped down. There's a small creek about 100 yards from here that we had to cross to come in here. And the banks are just pummeled with bear tracks. And the grass is smashed down where they're going from the bait down to the water to drink. And uh, Tom sent me a trail camera pictures of a bunch of chocolates and black bears. And it, it, this thing's just getting absolutely pounded here. So... Um, he says there's bears in here at all hours of the day, and I believe him.
I don't think you brought a big enough trailer. I, I didn't bring my darn saw either. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to shoot a bear tonight. I'm not going to shoot a bear on the first night. And I passed up 11, but number 12, pfft. You, I don't know if you got this bear on. I'm surprised you didn't say something if you got this bear on oh, camera. Look at him. He's a big one. I, there, there's two pretty big bears in there. Uh, this is... This is pretty big. I think it's bigger than one I got last year. <laughs> yeah, you know it went through them, right? Well, I didn't think it went all the way through, but it's all intact, so. Yeah. Yeah. He, he might have just grabbed it with his teeth and pulled it out. I think that's why it's laying there like that. He must have pulled it out with his teeth. Yeah, that's a big bear. And yeah, he got blood, really, it? really good blood. I mean, there's just... I just want to see a big, dead bear. Some other bear did this, you think, huh, Tom? Yes. Just tore his testicles off of him. There's the exit room, right? The exit wound right in the armpit where I thought it would be. It was a perfect shot. I mean, what in the world, this thing, how far did we go? 400 yards? Yes. Holy smokes. So, here's my bear, and he's a good one. Uh, another giant bear, two years in a row here at uh, Grandview Outfitting. Uh, special thanks to Tom Ainsworth and Deb. Boy, it's, uh, it's just phenomenal, the number of bears and the size of bears that you see, and also the color phase bears that they have here. And uh, Thanks to Jim for coming in here with us on the recovery effort this morning. We backed out last night when uh, it became clear that the bear hadn't died immediately like I thought it would with a shot like that and uh, you know the entry looks excellent the uh, exit wound is right in the right armpit so uh, you know you'd think it'd be a hard shot but apparently uh, I missed the heart because he went a long ways and he plowed through some nasty stuff and 
man if we got some work getting him out of here we're gonna have to just quarter him up and haul him out because there's no way to get a four-wheeler way back in here yeah get that over there hold it no get the meat that's going over the shoulder yeah all you holy can holy cow oh i told you they got to be a giveaway now is that all right okay i, I can go okay let him out all right here we go you just put that camera back in the yeah i will here's the lens cap put the camera back how's in that for traveling not bad i don't think it'll be too bad okay i'll probably have to stop and rest a few times